So, you ever see those massive ships out in the middle of the ocean, the ones that look like they're just sitting there, perfectly still, even with huge waves and crazy wind? It's not magic, and it's not a giant anchor. It's an incredible piece of engineering called a Dynamic Positioning System, or DP for short. Think of it like a GPS-powered force field. It uses a network of sensors, computers, and powerful thrusters to hold a vessel in the exact same spot, down to the meter. And when you're doing something delicate, like connecting to an oil rig or laying subsea cables, staying perfectly still isn't just a nice-to-have, it's absolutely critical. Now, what happens if one of those components fails? A single glitch could be catastrophic, that's where the 2 in DP2 comes in. It stands for redundancy, which is a fancy way of saying have a backup for your backup. A DP2 system is designed so that no single failure, whether it's a computer crashing, a sensor going offline, or a thruster giving out, can cause the ship to lose its position. It's the engineering equivalent of having a safety net, a parachute, and a jetpack, all at the same time. This level of built-in safety is what allows these massive vessels to perform incredibly complex tasks, safely, in some of the harshest environments on Earth. So how does this all actually work? It's like a super sophisticated orchestra where every single instrument has to play in perfect harmony. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive and break down the nine most important components that make up this technological marvel. We'll look at the brains, the eyes, the muscles, and the nervous system that all work together to keep these giants safe and steady. By the end, you'll have a whole new appreciation for the unsung hero of the offshore world. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with the absolute heart of the system, the DP control system, or as I like to call it, the brain. This isn't just one computer. In a DP2 system, it's at least two, sometimes three, identical computers running in parallel. They are constantly crunching an insane amount of data every single second. Imagine trying to solve a thousand physics problems at once while juggling. That's what these computers are doing. They take in information from all the vessel's sensors where we are, where the wind is coming from, how the waves are pushing us, and build a complete mathematical model of the environment and the ship itself. It's this model that allows the system to not just react, but to predict. Based on that complex model, the brain then calculates the exact amount of force needed and in what direction to counteract all those environmental forces pushing the ship around. It's a constant, delicate balancing act it then sends precise commands to the thrusters telling them, hey thruster 3, I need you to push at 73% power at a 15 degree angle, while simultaneously telling another, you, back off to 40%. And because this is a DP2 system, if one of these computer brains has a momentary hiccup or fails completely, the other one is ready to take over instantly and seamlessly without anyone on the bridge even spilling their coffee. It's the ultimate in high stakes multitasking. So the brain needs to know what to do, but all its calculations are useless if it doesn't know one fundamental thing, its exact position. That's where the position reference systems, or PRS, come in. And just like with the computers, you can't rely on just one. A DP2 system requires at least three independent systems, and they usually use different types of technology. The most common one you'll see is DGPS, which is like the GPS in your phone but on steroids. It uses multiple satellite signals and a ground-based reference station to get accuracy down to less than a meter. We need that precision. But what if you lose satellite signal? Maybe you're working next to a giant oil rig that's blocking the view of the sky. That's why we have other systems, like laser-based sensors that bounce a beam off a target on the nearby platform, or even acoustic systems that use underwater transponders on the seabed. The DP brain constantly compares the data from all three of these systems. If one of them starts giving a weird reading, maybe it's off by a few meters, the system can identify the faulty one, ignore its data, and rely on the other two. This cross-checking is what provides the robust, trustworthy position data that is the foundation of the entire operation. Okay, so, we have our GPS and other systems telling us where we are right now. But sometimes, signals can get blocked for a few seconds or they can be a little noisy. If the system relied only on that, the thrusters would be constantly overcorrecting, making for a jerky, inefficient ride. We need something to smooth things out and fill in the gaps. This is the job of the Inertial Navigation System, or INS. You might also hear it called an Inertial Reference Unit, or IRU. Think of it as the system's inner ear, it provides a sense of balance and motion. 
Inside the INS are incredibly sensitive gyroscopes and accelerometers. These devices don't need any external signals, they physically feel the vessel's every tiny movement, the pitch, the roll, the yaw, the surge. The INS uses this raw motion data to predict where the vessel will be in the next fraction of a second. So, if the GPS signal drops out for a moment, the DP brain doesn't panic. It trusts the INS's dead reckoning prediction to keep things stable. When the GPS signal comes back, the system recalibrates. This fusion of external position data with internal motion data is what allows for incredibly smooth, precise, and uninterrupted control even when the data coming in isn't perfect. A huge part of staying still is knowing what's trying to move you. You can't just react to the wind and waves, by the time you feel the push, you're already off position. A good DP system has to be proactive, and to do that, it needs to see what's coming. This is the role of the environmental sensors. These are the vessel's eyes and ears, constantly feeding the DP brain with real-time data about the forces of nature it's up against. The most obvious one is the anemometer, that little spinning cup device you see on weather stations, which measures wind speed and direction. But it's not just about the wind. The system also needs to know about the vessel's own state. That's where the Motion Reference Unit, or MRU, and the Gyro Compass come in. The MRU measures the vessel's roll, pitch, and heave, how it's bobbing and tilting in the waves. The Gyro Compass provides a super accurate heading, telling the system which way the ship is pointing, which is critical for knowing how the wind and current will affect it. By feeding all this data, wind, motion, and heading, into the mathematical model we talked about, the DP brain can calculate, okay, a 20-knot wind is coming from this direction so I need to preemptively apply this much thrust to counteract it before it even hits us. It's the difference between getting punched and blocking the punch before it lands. We've got the brain, the eyes, and the senses. Now we need the muscle. The thrusters are the components that actually do the physical work of holding the vessel in place. And these aren't your little outboard motors. We're talking about massive, powerful thrusters, some of which can rotate 360 degrees and provide pinpoint accurate force in any direction. A typical DP-2 vessel will have multiple thrusters, usually at least six, strategically placed around the hull. You might have a couple of tunnel thrusters at the bow and stern for side-to-side -side movement, and several azimuthing thrusters underneath that can be pointed anywhere. This isn't just for power, it's a core part of the redundancy principle. The DP brain's control algorithm is smart enough to know that if one thruster suddenly fails or needs to be taken offline for maintenance, it's not a disaster. The system instantly recalculates a new thrust plan, redistributing the load among the remaining online thrusters to achieve the exact same net force on the vessel. It might have to run the other thrusters a little harder, but the ship won't move from its target position. This ability to lose a major piece of hardware and continue operating safely is what separates a truly robust DP-2 system from a less reliable one. You can have the smartest computers, the most accurate sensors, and the strongest thrusters in the world, but if the lights go out, none of it matters. Power is everything. That's why the Power Management System, or PMS, is one of the most critical, behind-the-scenes components. Its job is to ensure a continuous, stable, and reliable supply of electricity to all the essential DP equipment. On a DP-2 vessel, this means the entire power system is split into at least two independent sides, a concept called bus-tie separation. Think of it like having two completely separate power grids on one ship. Each side has its own generators, switchboards, and cabling, feeding a specific group of thrusters and control systems. Normally a bus tiebreaker connects these two sides, letting them share power for efficiency, but the PMS is always monitoring for problems. If it detects a fault on one side, like a generator failing, it will instantly open that bus tiebreaker in milliseconds, isolating the fault. This prevents a single failure from cascading and causing a total ship blackout. The healthy side of the power grid continues to power its share of the DP system, which, thanks to all that redundancy we've been talking about, is enough to hold the vessel's position safely. It's the ultimate electrical safety net. All this amazing automation is great, but you still need a qualified human in the loop. The DP operator, or DPO, is the conductor of this whole orchestra, and their instrument is the Human Machine Interface, or HMI. This is typically a console on the ship's bridge with multiple monitors, joysticks, and buttons. It's the window into the brain of the DP system. 
The HMI displays all the critical information in a clear, intuitive way. The vessel's position, the status of every sensor, the power output of each thruster and any active alarms, its mission control for the ship. The DPO uses this interface to set up the system, telling it where to hold position and which sensors and thrusters to use, but more importantly, they use it to monitor the system's health and performance. The HMI is designed to draw the operator's attention to anything that's not right. Alarms will pop up with distinct sounds and colors for different levels of severity, from a simple warning that a sensor is a bit noisy, to a critical alarm that a thruster has failed. This allows the human operator to maintain situational awareness, make informed decisions, and intervene if necessary, ensuring that a skilled mariner is always overseeing the automated system for the ultimate layer of safety. So we have all these different components, scattered all over a giant steel ship, computers on the bridge, sensors on the mast, thrusters deep under the water, how do they all talk to each other instantly and reliably? They're all connected by the DP network, which is essentially the vessel's central nervous system. This isn't like the Wi-Fi in your house. This is a high-speed industrial grade and, you guessed it, redundant data network. Typically it's comprised of at least two and often three completely separate physical networks. Each network has its own independent Ethernet switches and its own physical cables running through different paths in the ship. The DP computer, every sensor and every thruster controller is connected to both of these networks simultaneously. This means that if one network goes down, maybe a switch fails or a cable gets physically cut, which can happen on a ship, all the data simply continues to flow on the other network without any interruption. This robust and fault-tolerant communication backbone is essential. A delay of even a fraction of a second in getting a command to a thruster could be the difference between holding position and having an incident. So we've looked at all these individual parts, but the real genius of a DP2 system is how they all come together with a philosophy that actively plans for failure. This is formalized in a document called the Failure Mode and Effects Analysis, or FMEA. This is an incredibly detailed engineering study that imagines every possible way a single component could fail. A wire breaking, a valve sticking, a computer overheating, a software bug, and then verifies that the system has a built-in redundancy to handle it without losing position. The FMEA is the system's rulebook for survival. This principle of N-1 redundancy is the defining characteristic of DP2. It means the system can withstand the failure of any one component and still operate. This is proven through rigorous testing during what are called DP trials. During these trials, engineers will literally go and pull the plug on a running generator, or disable a GPS or shut down a thruster, all while the vessel is operating, just to prove that the system behaves exactly as the FME predicts. It's this combination of smart design, built-in backups, and obsessive testing against every imaginable failure that gives operators the confidence to perform billion-dollar operations in the most challenging conditions on the planet. So, as we've seen, a DP2 system is so much more than just a fancy cruise control. It's a complex ecosystem of interconnected components, each playing a vital role. From the triple redundant brains of the control system and the diverse eyes of the position reference systems, to the powerful muscles of the thrusters, and the unbreakable nervous system of the network, every single piece is critical. The failure of any one part is compensated for by the strength of the others. It's this symphony of redundancy that creates a system that is robust, reliable, and above all, safe. The next time you see a picture or video of one of these incredible vessels working offshore, a wind turbine installation vessel, a cable lay ship, or a deep sea drilling platform, take a moment to appreciate the invisible technology at work. Holding a 20,000 ton ship steady within a one meter circle in the middle of the ocean is one of the great unsung marvels of modern engineering. The complexity is staggering, but it's that very complexity that allows humans to safely and effectively work in environments we were never meant to conquer. The DP2 system truly is the unsung hero of the offshore world. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. Engineering like this is what gets me really excited and I hope you found it as fascinating as I do. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Hit those like and subscribe buttons it really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments what other incredible pieces of engineering you'd like to see us break down next. Until then, stay curious.